What is up guys and welcome back to a brand new video of my team journey episode 7 in our last episode well it was <laughs> it was a shambolic one as we've had a lot of track limit violations resulting in so many penalties for that and we had back to back Grand Prix because we crashed out on both occasions spoiler alert if you not watched the previous episode but yeah, we're going to forget about it and just press forward and head over to the British Grand Prix, our home track, a track that I'm not very good at, I must be honest. But we managed to get an upgrade in for this episode, which is handy. We've got an event to sort out where we got 100k from what we sold and a thousand claim points, which is handy at all. And we had an upgrade failed. Very handy. And we had a bit of money to spend so I wanted to upgrade the facility on the chassis side because I really wanted to get the upgrade scene coming quick and sufficient. But we then sought out the um, rear wing because it failed on us and I wanted to get that sorted for um, in time for the British Grand Prix hopefully but unfortunately it was just not possible. So we ended up having to put out our car. They were only going time for the Hungary, Hungarian Grand Prix. But we did manage to do ourselves another upgrade, which was the tire wear upgrade. It's only a minor, but every step helps. So we got through all this practice session because I just wanted to just fast forward all of the um, all of the um, objectives and everything, and get all the little bonus points for everything because. It's a chore and everything. But we managed to get all the resource points. And while we're at it, because we had a lot of resource points, I wanted to upgrade the engine because we are just lacking in the straights. And it's not helpful at all. So we're going to go for a major engine where engine upgrade that will hopefully go on in time for spa. Very much needed, that is. Because that is quite a powerful track. Quite a powerful track, that is. Same with Monza as well. We now have changed some components for our car because they're worn off. And we're going to qualify. So we qualify on the helm. Uh, I was really hoping to do well in this. I wanted to see... But we had so many options to do and I did go for a setup that I felt comfortable with off uh, off of the screen because I just really wanted to find a nice balance where I can be fast and stable. So we're heading on to our first flying lap here and already we're in the mud which was not very helpful at all. So we ended up having to go and do that again on this uh, run here as we start to do it now and this part of the track I personally love it is very fast and very flowing unfortunately I didn't do a very good job on that one but hence why I'm not a very good driver on here nor am I so confident on this so we come around for the last few corners and come across in the line here and we're now doing a 1 minute 30 which isn't bad and at the same time, I was a bit surprised, considering that I thought the other drivers would be much faster. And um, we did try to go out for another run, but it was all really bad at the start because we caught up to Williams of Latifi, who's in our way, and this is really annoying us. And we go into this corner and we went wide again, and that was it. The lap was ruined. Right up the mud. Thanks to TP, but thankfully it didn't matter too much as we managed to get through qualifying one with surprising results, I must admit. Very handy for that. So we press on in Q2, hoping for better than to get such a Q3. And Pierre Gasly, I believe, that just comes out of the pits. No, it's George Russell. Excuse my driving. And he's just in the way. I'm starting to fly now and he just blocks us here. My goodness thanks Russell thanks for that so that cost us a bit of time 
on our first flying lap for Q2. And we come across the line here now, and we do ourselves a 1 minute 30.5. 3 tenths slower than what we did in Q1. Not ideal. If it weren't for Russell getting in the way, we would have been a little bit higher. But it is what it is. But I wanted to go out again. But again, we had the same problem. Thankfully, Pierre Gansi gets out of the way extremely quickly, which was very helpful. And then we got Lewis Hamilton up ahead, who was on a cool, who was on a warm-up lap, and he gets into a way. Jesus, I'm saying this, I'm like ruining my ruining my lap, and Ricardo's starting to ruin it as well. But thankfully, we're coming to the end of the lap, so we come across the line here, and we do one, we do one twenty nine six. That was the fastest lap we did for the whole weekend. Only 700 shy for Max Verstappen. Confidence was very high. And it's very high for this. And I'm feeling confident about it. So anyways, we press on to Q3 and we come across the line on our first flying lap. And it's a 130.1. It wasn't bad, but we were only used to the tires. Because I wanted to do one run where we get through our use set and I want to see where the others were. And so we come across the line here and to start our final flying lap in hopes to get a good starting position. And again, traffic just comes out at the wrong time. Perez comes up to this corner. Mate! Mate, you're blocking my lap. Jeez Louise, man. Perez. That was really annoying. So we did a cool down lap. And we decided to go again because I was not happy with that. And so I saved up my battery and we pressed forward for uh, this flying lap. I really wanted to do well on this qualifying. Our qualifying has not been great so far this season. I know it's, I know it's not a good car at the moment, but we're slowly making development progress work on this. Despite the failures, we fast forward time on here and you can give a nice lap around this track. This section here is my favorite, like I said. Coming up to this, this field train straight here. Charles Leclerc puts in the faster time. Qualifying is now finished. We are like by six tenths. This is a massive improvement. And so we're coming across the line here. And where does it put us? I didn't quite catch that. It puts us fifth place. I will happily take that. Fifth place for the British Grand Prix. With Carlos Sainz taking pole position. Much like real life. Oh, I was pretty pleased with fifth place, I must admit. So, with that set in stone, we were able to beat uh, our Albon's rival, which was very handy. As for Piastri, he was just like almost plumb last, which is inevitable, to say the least. But it is what it is. We can only hope for better things in the, in the Grand Prix. So, without further ado, let's get straight into it. Welcome to Great Britain and the Great Silverstone Circuit for today's Grand Prix. With good opportunities to overtake at the end of the Wellington and Hangar Straits, there's a lot of potential for close action around the 3.6 miles of Silverstone Circuit. With 18 corners and an average lap speed of around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the longest and quickest circuits on the calendar. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. It's Carlos Sainz in pole position and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Phoenix and Russell, Perez, Norris, Ricardo, and Esteban Ocon. Fernando Alonso, Gasly, Mick Schumacher, and Bottas. Magnussen, Vettel, Yuki Tsunoda, and Lance Stroll. Joe, Albon, Latifi, and Oscar Piastri. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. With me, as usual, is Anthony Davidson. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do. And that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. 
So we're hoping for better things in this Grand Prix after the previous two being such a disappointment for us. And I opted to go for the mediums because I wanted to do well off the start. So without further ado, let's get straight into this. As we begin the formation lap now. Here we go then, and we're off for the formation lap here at Silverstone, dubbed the home of British motor racing. Now, while the layout of this circuit has changed on numerous occasions, the spirit of the track that hosted the very first Formula One World Championship Grand Prix is still very much. Just about me. So as all the cars reform the grid, the drivers will be hoping to get a strong start and they'll want to earn some valuable points from today's race, with final communications being done with their race engineers. I must admit, ever since switching to the uh, formation lab being broadcast, it has been a bit of a relaxation. So I don't have to worry about doing all tyre warm-ups and everything since I have traction control on. Because, again, using the controller, I'm not very good at it. I know it takes practice, but it's just not so much fun when you've got to try and control the throttle. Nearly everything. So we line up on the grid here, starting fifth. The all British front, an all British third row. So three, three red lights, four red lights, five red lights, and the British Grand Prix is now underway. So we managed to get an average start, and George Russell on the left is a lightning getaway. We pop down to six, which is all right, but then Norris gets us here on the on the end of, on the inside. You know, Paris comes on the inside of us. It literally hits us. Thanks, mate. And it's literally three wide in this space. Like Ricardo on the inside, Perez on the outside. We managed to hold both drivers off. Thank goodness, hit me. We're down. We're going to drop two places from fifth to seventh. It's not bad. It's not worse. But I'd rather it drop two places than out of the top ten, which is crucial to say the least. Now. The end of the game is to stick with these drivers as much as possible, considering how fast they are and how OP they are on this track. Perez is coming that back at us. My goodness me, that Perez, that not that Perez, he's the rev was so fast in a straight line. He's side by side, heading into Magnus and Beckett. We just get ahead with two touch a little bit, and we just Perez hits us. He hits us in the back, and that's contact, and he loses his front wing. And here's a replay of the incident. Side by side through Magnus and Beckett. And literally, we just tap there. And then Perez runs to the back of us and he loses his front wing. That's ruined his race. I'm so sorry, Perez. But at the same time, you got what you got coming. And he's the onboard footage of this. And yeah, he just ran straight in the back of us. That's ruined his race. Sorry, mate. So without further ado, Ricardo's like heading towards, heading towards Stowe. Side by side with us. We get the inside, we just managed to hold him off. Get a poor exit though. We managed to hold him at bay. Ocon managed to get in front of Ricardo. So let's so let's try and get our head down and try and pull away from these guys as possible. As we see Perez in the pits replacing his front wing from the damage that caused by us. <laughs> Hate to say it, but I know I broke a bit early, but at the same time I went a bit wide. What more else can I do? So without further ado, trying to pull away from Ocon as much as possible since uh, they are a threat to us. But um, as time progressed, uh, we were able to pull away from Ocon and Ricardo as well, who overtook Ocon. Uh, I didn't pay much attention to it as I was focusing so much on my race. And uh, we, are, we are just keeping up with the top six, which is um, pretty pleasing to see. I must be honest, just over two seconds at this early stage of the Grand Prix. And then we came up to this corner here, then we get a track limit violation. Our first one of the day. Not ideal. Two more times, and we get a penalty, which is slightly annoying. The side by side actions between Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton coming up to Stowe here. Side by side, Lewis Hamilton gets ahead. He gets ahead of Verstappen. Nice move there. Here's the upper footage from Verstappen. Literally side by side action here. Coming up to Stowe. Side by side. Lewis Hamilton almost ran him out wide. And that is third place for Lewis Hamilton. Nice move there from the McFace from the Mercedes driver. Almost at McLaren. Bit embarrassing. There's a slow car there. That has to be Perez. 
Oh no, it's an engine failure by the looks of it. His race has literally come to an end and it's a race he'll want to forget. Such a shame. But unfortunately that's the reality of Formula 1. You win some, you lose some. And we started closing in on the McLaren of Norris. But then there's side by side action between the Ferraris. Juggling for the lead here. Heading to towards Stone. Charles Leclerc gets the lead. Takes the lead away from Paul to Sainz. As Perez's car is still out there on the yellows. How's that not a time penalty? How's that not a time penalty? This is rigged. Perez, uh, not Perez. Verstappen comes back and Lewis Hamilton on the inside. It literally takes him. And he's back up to third place. Lewis Hamilton couldn't do anything about it. And here's the onboard footage from Max Verstappen. He did, Lewis Hamilton did what Lewis Hamilton did to him. Ran him wide from uh, Stowe. And he's now back up to third place. Here are the two Alpines squabbling over... I, I can't remember what position they were in, but Fernando also gets a DRS on the inside of Stowe. This is becoming a passing point at this state. <laughs> this is a good race so far. Early laps in. This is great. Here's the onboard footage of Lando Alonso on the inside of Ocon. And he takes the place away from him. Nice move there from uh, Alonso. And here we come up to lap 8 of this Grand Prix. And... Yeah, I, I figured on that one, and, and there was, I don't think there was going to be a way to catch up with the guys at the front because they're just too fast at this space. And we did get the call to come into the pits, but I opted to stay out for an extra lap in hopes to overcut uh, at least three drivers in the top six. Because, well, we've got nothing to lose. We've got nothing to lose at all. Verstappen, Perez, and I think Leclerc, not Perez, Verstappen, Hamilton, and the and the Claire pitted. And then the next lap later, Russell, Sainz, and Norris all pit as well. They all pit at the same time. Sainz just gets ahead of Russell, and Russell gets ahead of Norris just about. Nice pit work on those teams there. And we come in for ourselves. And our first pit stop of the seas of the race here. It's a nice pit stop for us. And we hopefully will be able to jump the guys and try and do something about it. But it was inevitable they were just going to get faster they were just too fast uh, for us so we rejoined seventh place i believe just ahead of ricardo um i believe so and but now we're going to the hard tires which is um vital at this stage it's literally taking us to the end of the grand prix which is um uh, which is all we can do now yeah we're just ahead of ricardo which is which is crucial for us and then um Sometimes Magnus and Pegasus doesn't work for us. Sometimes it works wonders for us. At this stage, the tires are cold at this point, which is um, not ideal at all. As you can see, the top six on this mini map here, they're literally just inseparable. Look how close they are. Top six battling for the win and for the podium. This is incredible. Out of my times playing 4v1 games, I don't feel like I've ever seen a battle this close so far with Sainz leading the way and George Russell homing in on him in second place hoping to get his first win in Formula 1 but with Lewis Hamilton right in the back I don't I can't remember how many times he won the British Grand Prix but he'll hope to extend his uh, all right he won it seven times uh, hoping to achieve his eighth British Grand Prix win this is a, this is a pretty epic I must be honest I, I could from what I can just tell by this it's literally like one and a half seconds separated from the top six. This is insane. George Russell gets a nice slip stream. He goes on the inside of Cops. All turn one. And now side by side. Science and P George Russell side by side here. Coming out to Maggot and Beckett. Where is this going to end? They're side by side still. Wow. This is truly epic. Science just gets ahead just about. But Norris, but not Norris. But Russell gets uh, DRS. As does Hamilton and Norris. He's up there as well. George Russell comes in on the inside of Stowe and he takes the place from Sainz. Wow, that was an epic battle. Sainz starts to come back at him, but he can't do anything about it. Norris gets on the inside of Hamilton and on the outside, but Hamilton just holds up Norris. Wow, this is one being one hell of a lap here. 
One out of a battle. I wish I was part of this. Leclerc comes on the inside of Verstappen. And does he take the place? He, no, he doesn't take the place. Verstappen just holds off a bit. Wow. What a battle that was. As we see our teammate come into the pits for his first stop of the season. Well, of the race, sorry to say the least. And he had that problem with the left, with the right rear tyre. It's not going to make much difference because he's in the back half of the field anyways. So nothing much more he could do about that. But anyways, we press on forward for our Grand Prix. And we, we can't close up to the guys in front. They're just too quick. Just seeing how close they all are. George Russell again. And Sainz batting it for the lead. This is incredible racing. Absolutely incredible. Here's the onboard footage from Leclerc. They suddenly still squabbling over each other. Look at Norris trying to get ahead of Hamilton. And Leclerc on the inside of Verstappen. Heading to turn one. He goes wide. Oh, in typical fashion, we didn't see who goes out on top. That's that's fine. It, it, I'm sure it will be revealed so say, But Leclerc doesn't quite get ahead in the end. Just looking at the um, mini map, I know that. And there's a, there's a yellow flag down there. Who's that for? Oh, it's Alex Albon. Albon is out of the Grand Prix. Paul Williams. Oh, dear. That's not going to do him any good. But that's going to do our rival status um, some good. With him not finishing the Grand Prix and uh, not scoring any points. Not that he's going to get his points anyway. He's like in the back half of the field. Such a shame for him. But. Anyways, we press forward and get and try to break up with the lost time and catch up with the top six in the event. But again, we just lack that space, not pace. And Verstappen goes on the inside and just oh, just Norris out of the way. And I think he gets front wing damage from that. A bit naughty from Verstappen. It's side by side action between the two of them. This is epic. Norris gets the RS though. Would he, get, would he be able to pull ahead? He's only slightly pulling ahead. Then Leclerc comes back at, comes in. And it's three abreast. No, my goodness me. Leclerc comes out on top slightly. It's side by side action. Three abreast going into this corner here. Wow. Verstappen just holds off side by side between Leclerc and Norris. This is epic. Oh, my goodness me. You just can't catch a breath. This is epic. Side by side again. Verstappen and Norris. It's just inseparable at this stage. Side by side again in Rackets and Beckets. Oh my goodness me. Wow. Oh, I need to catch a breath here. Jeez. Norris comes out on top. But he doesn't get, he gets the RS. And Sainz comes back at, the, at George Russell. Oh, we don't see in the end, but Verstappen comes back at Norris. And he takes the place up into fourth place. For the Dutch driver, the defending world champion. He's got nothing to lose at this state. Wow. What a battle that was. What a nice battle. I really wish I was part of that battle. This would have been epic. But given where we are in, this, in our car stages, there was no way we were going to battle with them guys. Oh, that was breathtaking. And again, Norris and Declare. Inseparable. But Declare goes on the inside of Stowe. And Norris just keeps him at bay. Does he get ahead? I think he just gets ahead. It's the on board of Norris. It's side by side through Stowe. Oh my word, this is brilliant racing. Bruce respect between the two drivers. And I think Laura Claire just comes out on the top in the end. I think with Norris's slight damage run win, that would make him lose a bit of performance. Which is not ideal to say the least, considering this is a very high downforce track. And you need a good pace in the um in the uh, straights as well. But with this squabbling, we were able to close up on Leclerc and <laughs> Norris. They are side by side still. This is unbelievable. My goodness me. You cannot make this up. Leclerc comes out on top. Norris gets DRS. Side by side for Stowe again. All this squabbling is allowing me to catch up. My goodness me. We were like two seconds away. And now it's like half a second between Norris and Leclerc. This is epic. Please continue doing this. If we get super close up to it, break super late and oh, we get track limit violation. Damn it! That's not ideal, but we're super close to Norris. And Leclerc just comes down on top and he was able to pull away from Norris. And um, oh, the dirty air. We didn't get a good exit out of that corner there. 
no idea we do get DRS on this main straight, but we're just too far back, too far back at all. At this time, I didn't know he had front wing damage, um, and I wanted to see why he was so slow all of a sudden. Okay, their tyres are seven laps old. The car ahead has damaged the front wing, but it seems fairly minor. The last lap time was a one minute thirty-five point three. This is brilliant. You're taking two and a half seconds out of each lap. Thank you very much, Mark. But as I said, I didn't realize, I didn't know at the time that he had from wing damage, which is helping us catch up to him. But every time we get close to him, he just seems to pull away slightly. We get so close into the corners on braking, but on the straight, he just has that little bit much power to say the least. So we're coming to Beckett and Beckett with his last fast speed. We didn't get a good run out of there at all. Not ideal, not ideal at all. But we're much close. But we're much closer this time around on the DRS. On the back straight here with the with the power of the ERS they're coming up towards Stowe. And can we get Norris? Can we do a little dive bottle on here? Yes we do! We get him at Stowe and that is sixth place for us. Nicely done. Up into sixth place. Nice. Now we continue to catch up to the Claire and see what we can do for this. Bruh. I mean it's rather annoying to say the least. So, with a 3 second time period, we're now having to make up time. And uh, hopefully we gain, we gain our 6th place, which I will take at this stage. Okay, you're the car. It's rather annoying, to say the least. But, we were able to pull away from uh, Norris, who got overtaken by Ricardo, okay, which is um, not ideal for him at all. But this is the last lap of the Grand Prix, and from the mini-map, the leaders are still so the leaders are so close and everything. I don't know who's gonna win this Grand Prix. Just looking at the mini map here. Coming out on the hanging straight here. This is the last lap of the Grand Prix. And we see George Russell making the late move on the inside. And he gets he does he make a stick and he gets him! He gets him on the last few corners of the Grand Prix. George Russell, he's literally gonna come home to take his first win in Formula One for Mercedes. George Russell comes through and wins the British Grand Prix. Wow. It's the onboard footage on how he managed to do it. He gets the DR racing. He also got the outside, but doesn't do it. He goes on the inside, side by side action, and he just managed to hold on the power. Sainz wasn't brave enough. George was. He was much braver. He was hungry for it. Sainz is going to have to yield for second place, and George Russell comes through to take his first win in Formula 1. What a place to do it. Nicely done for George. Nicely done. But as for us, we're going to come through the last few corners ahead of Ricardo. 4.4 seconds away with a 3 second time penalty. And we're going to get our career best 6th place. And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in part Fermi. Plenty of action then here in Silverstone, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those we witnessed today. Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Congratulations to George Russell, winning his first ever Grand Prix in Formula 1, winning his first race for Mercedes, and his, fir and his fir first win for Mercedes of the season. Nicely done. <laughs> I'm out of breath. What a Grand Prix that was. Honestly, I cannot tell you or stress how much of an exciting Grand Prix that was. <laughs> Almost like real life. Real life's Grand Prix was spectacular. This Grand Prix was just spectacular to us. Top six separated by one and a half seconds. <sighs> that, was <laughs> that was unbelievable. As for our teammate, well, there's nothing much to say really, he's come last. And he got beaten by Williams. I kind of expected more from him. But contract talks will come up in the next episode. Oh, that was 
That was one head of a Grand Prix. <laughs> oh, that was spectacular. We have a ride of status going up and everything, which is very handy to say the least. But we're still not quite there with our car. We just need to focus on upgrading it still. And we got um, Austria next, a powerful, a fast, powerful track, which is um, going to be uh, interesting. But off, off screen, I um, did try to work on my setups for the for that Grand Prix track. Still working on it, but hopefully I can find a good setup for it, to say the least. But anyways. This was uh, episode 7 of the My Team Journey for, um, for uh, the Iron Phoenix and for the Phoenix Motorsport team. Six points, not six points, eight points in the back for the team. Sixth place is a phenomenal result considering <laughs> how the Grand Prix went for us. The collision with Perez and um, the time penalty to say the least. My oh my. I need a drink. <laughs> what a Grand Prix that was. But... Hopefully we can do better. Hopefully we can push one better for um, Austria, to say the least. The uh, home home track for um, the Red Bull team. But, anyways, this was the Grand Prix of the of the season so far. My oh my oh my oh my. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Oh boy, that was good fun. But anyways, I just want to say thank you so much for watching um, uh, for watching the video today. Uh, sorry for the delay in the upload. Uh, just a uh, five plus to get in the way and everything. I will try and continue to upload more videos daily as possible. And hopefully we can push on February in the development race. And hopefully we can get a good result for the end of the season. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching again. So leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And if you're on Twitch, I'm on there as well. Give me a follow on that. And your support will mean the world to me. And without further ado, I will see you in the next video.